Well, since we worked on essays last time, we should probably do some math. Mm, what? I hate math. Every problem on the SAT math can be solved in three minutes or less. If you're a math genius and a freak like you... I'm not a freak. You are a freak. Mrs. Hammond, the answer is easy. You just take the coefficient divided by the dividend of the parallelogram. Oh, whatever, I don't sound like that. You do sound like that. All you need to know for the SAT math is arithmetic, geometry, and algebra. That's it. Whatever, I still don't want to spend 15 minutes learning about math. Well, I'll make this lesson more interesting for you. If it was taught by a bear who was jacked up on energy drinks. All right. That's right, my job, math bear. My friend hates math. I need your help to show him how easy it is. Florida. You've got to be kidding me. Shut up, bull. Florida. What? Mojo was just saying today we're going to go through some basic strategies to make sure that anyone of any skill level can do well. <laughs> Woo! Boom! What's he drinking? <laughs> the first and most important thing to know is the instructions for the math sections. All the math formulas you need to know are listed in the front, but it's best if you know them all before and how to use them before you take the test so you can save time. These formulas are all you need to know to take the test. That's it. So if you make flashcards and memorize them, you'll be in really great shape. That sucks, man. I hate this already. Oh, whoa, what the hell? Uh, you insulted Mojo. He was actually saying that math is easier than you think, especially the first 10 or 15 problems. Oh yeah, they go from easiest to hardest. <laughs> That's right. So Mojo was saying, depending on what score you want, only focus on the questions you think you have a shot at getting. It's okay to leave the hardest math question blank in each section so you can focus on the ones you know you can do. Also, to help you know what questions to return to and to spend time on, develop a coding system. Put a check by questions you know you got right, a question mark by questions you aren't sure of but we're able to eliminate one or more of the answer choices, and an X by questions you don't know at all and think you should leave blank. Oh yeah, if you want to get between a 700 and 800 on the math section, you have to attempt all of the problems. Since I hate math, shouldn't I use my calculator on all the problems? Florida, Florida, are you flirting me? What'd I say? Well, Mojo was just saying that you should really use your calculator wisely. Most of the problems on the SAT can be done without one. In fact, probably all of the problems can be done without one. So save your time and try it without it first. Why is he staring at me? He wants to make sure you got it. Yeah, I got it. Use the calculator only when necessary. Try to do all the problems without it first. Since you can write in the booklet, it's always smart to write out your work in the book rather than doing it in your head so you can check that you did it right. Always label diagrams and always cross out answer choices that you know are wrong. That bear seriously needs to chill. He's passionate about math. Mojo! Florida. Ah. Apology accepted, Mojo. What Mojo was saying is know all the grid and directions before you take the test. Ugh. What? I hate these problems. They take forever. I've spent like five minutes on the same problem. Did that stupid bear just laugh at me? What he's trying to say is that none of these problems required complicated computations. If you find yourself doing a lot of work, there's probably a simpler way. Always look for a faster approach. 
look for patterns uh, and label your diagrams. And remember that unless a problem says figure not drawn to scale, it is drawn to scale. And so you can make assumptions about its lines, uh, its sides, angles, and proportions. And for example, like if you can find a radius, use that radius somewhere else in the diagram to help you. Oh, also, and this is key, the math doesn't get harder, the question wording just gets trickier. So they're just trying to trick you. Read very carefully as you get to the higher problems so you know exactly what they're looking for. Flurga, flurga, flurga. Mojo was also saying that there's some tricks and shortcuts he could show you to help you just in case you get stuck. He wants to know if he could show them to you. I love it. Flurga, 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 flurga. First, Mojo says, always label shapes and diagrams thoroughly. You'll often see a way to solve it you hadn't thought of before. You can also take the answers and plug them back into the problem to see which works best. This is often helpful when they want you to solve for a variable. So start with answer choice E and plug up. Eliminate the answers that don't get you the answer you want. So let's review how to approach a math problem. So what do we do first? First I label, draw diagrams, mark up the problem. Sometimes it helps to extend the sides and lines and label those as well. Like if they give me a radius, I should look to see if applying that radius in another part of the diagram would help me. Always label everything in a geometry problem. Mojo wants to see if you can list the strategies for all the math sections. Okay, let me see if I can remember. Know the instructions for the math sections and the grid ins before the day of the test. Perfect. Memorize the formulas at the beginning of the math sections and make flashcards. The test goes from easy to hard. As the questions get harder, read carefully because the wording will try to trick me. Mojo said that's perfect. But he says, as you get better, you should try to do more of the math problems if you have time, because the more problems you do, the higher score you get. You can only get a 700 to 800 if you attempt all the problems. Florida. Oh, that's it. We're done. Good job, guys. Next week, Nick will take you through some critical reading strategies for the critical reading section, but the homework for this week is to practice at least three or four math sections using the strategies we discussed today, take the math concepts assessment test so you know what things you need to work on in the weeks to come, and make sure you make those flashcards so you can memorize the formulas. And you can get this all at www.higherscoreinsight.com. It's got flashcards, worksheets, the works. That's it. We're done. Bye, guys. Flurga, blurga, blurga, jurga. Flurga, blurga, jurga. Flurga. Flurga, blurga, blurga, blurga. Jurga, blurga, 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 jurga. Burk, jurga. Oh, man, that's strong. <laughs> It's cool, Mojo. It's cool. It's cool.